Sample 6-10 is the moons of Saturn. So we're going to discuss three of Saturn's known 20, excuse me, 62 moons and their gravitational attractions amongst themselves and also their um, attraction due to Saturn. So we've got three moons of Saturn here, um, Tethys, Diony, and Rhea. Um, and I'm sort of guessing at their pronunciations, although I did look them up. Um, but we'll just use uh, T, D, and R as our subscripts here. So the masses that we have are the mass of Tethys, 6.2 times 10 to the 20 kilograms. For Diana, 1.1 times 10 to the 21 kilograms. And for Rhea, and I'll have to be careful between the D and the R, 2.3 times 10 to the 21st kilograms for Rhea. Now we're also given their uh, relative positions here, uh, where we have Diana here. We have, whoops, no, I don't want to select that. We have Tethys here or Tethys here, and we have Rhea here. And so we have this little triangle where this distance is 2.3 times 10 to the fifth kilometers. This distance also 2.3 times 10 to the fifth kilometers. And then this hypotenuse, uh, which I guess we have to solve for. So at, at some sort of arbitrary point in time, they make this isosceles triangle, and we're going to do this. Now, the actual calculation of the force is very easy, even though it's a few steps long, um, but this is essentially a vector addition problem. So the question here is, what is the net force on Tethys? All right. Okay. So the way to find the net force on Tethys, remember that gravity is always attractive. So Diana is going to pull Tethys this way. Ray is going to pull Tethys this way. And so we have, we kind of feel like we're going to ultimately get a first quadrant vector for our resultant. So before we can find the net force on Tethys, we need to calculate each force individually. So let's first calculate the force on Tethys due to Diana, and that's what that um, subscript's gonna mean there. Uh, you could flip them, it's not a big problem until we talk about direction. So we have the uh, universal gravitational constant, we need the mass of each planet, so Tethys and Diana, and then we need that distance squared. So take a second, stop the video. Um, remember, you gotta convert kilometers to meters, but at the end of the day, you get 8.6 times 10 to the 14th newtons, <clears throat> excuse me, and that force is directed the way I've drawn things up. Um, they do exert an equal and opposite force on each other, so Tethys exerts a force on Diana that's the same magnitude but towards Tethys, but remember we're asked to find the net force on Tethys, so all we care about right now is that Diana is pulling it up. Right? To find the force on Tethys due to Rhea, we need big G again. Again, the mass of Tethys. Now we need the mass of Rhea, and we need that distance squared. It's the same distance. Don't forget to um, convert again. Um, but due to this different mass of Rhea, we have a force here of 1.8 times 10 to the 15th Newtons. And that's as we've drawn things to the right. Okay, so again, we've got uh, Diana pulling it up, if you will, <laughs> Rhea pulling it to the right, if we will. Um, luckily, this is an easy vector addition problem because these vectors are perpendicular to each other. So you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find that the net force on Tethys due to these two other moons is 2.0 times 10 to the 15th Newtons. And the angle is 26 degrees, as this has been drawn. Okay, now the maybe more interesting part of this problem says, well, let's compare this mass, or excuse me, the force due to these other moons to the force that it's getting from Saturn, okay? So we're also told that the mass of Saturn, right, much bigger, right, Saturn's a planet, and the distance here is admittedly further Okay, but let's see who wins this battle, the further distance or the bigger mass. Well, one more plug and chug. 
with the mass of Saturn and the mass of Tethys divided by the radius squares gives us 2.7 times 10 to the 20th Newton. Now, I guess the direction of this force, if you will, would be towards Saturn. Uh, but I don't have anything better than that because we just have a general pointing in the picture. So when they say compare this to the force that Saturn exerts on Tethys, well, these two moons are exerting something on the order of, of 10 to the 15th. Saturn is exerting something on the order of 10 to the 20th. That's probably not surprising. The planet's a lot bigger. Um, and, and the other moons are going to pull each other, you know, in large part, canceling things out. So this is less a gravity problem and more a net force problem. So just think of it as another opportunity to practice your vector addition um, while also practicing our formula for gravity. So there, there it is.